the MX-5, as soon as you get in it, before you even drive it, it just feels sporty. You've got these big haunches on the bonnet that stick up out in front of you. And then you've got the, the sills which you step over to get into the car and you feel low down and, and uh, enclosed with this cockpit. And then you've got the, the sporty dials in front of you, cowled in silver. It's all just uh, lends itself to just feeling special before you've even started the engine. Welcome to the fourth generation Mazda MX-5, uh, known as the ND. I've already done a video on the third generation, which is the NC. This is the very latest version. In fact, this is the very latest version of the latest version of the MX-5. So it's the third little sort of adjustment slash facelift they've done to the car that came out in 2016. So yeah, the MX-5 is a lightweight, and in this case, just one ton, one ton of weight sports car with rear wheel drive and just two seats. So it's not a Grand Tour, it's not designed for long distance. You've only got a very small uh, luggage area, but it's a fun little car to drive. And Mazda have kept this, this idea going for years, you know, just massive props to them for continuing with it because there's not many of these sorts of cars around now. If you want to buy one, what do you go for, you know? As you know, MX-5 is a soft top folding roof. It's dead easy to do in this car. It's like, it's, it's manual. You use your, your own physical arms to do it you can just unclip it and push it back and then push it down. From 2018 they did the retractable fastback version which uh, is basically the hard top MX-5 but it, it still folds back. It's not like the folding roof of the previous generation in the, where it all completely folds back. In, in, the, in the RF the buttresses are still there at the back so it just kind of like brings the, the top part off a bit like a target top. It's not a full convertible and also the, the there's this extra weight added by it which uh, goes against Mazda's uh, gram strategy. But you do get the extra security and with the roof up at least, I think the RF looks great. So it's actually really easy to drive. The clutch and, and gearbox and everything are just like, there's no, there's no trickiness to it. You don't have to get at the hang of it or anything. You can get in and you can drive. So, although it's like a sports car. It's, to turn left after three quarters of a mile. It's very accessible. Um, you know, anybody, anybody can drive one. The ride in this, um, 2022 Sport model. Now the wheels aren't massive, but it's a little bit bouncier and firmer than I remember the NC being. But it's still not. It's, not, it's definitely not bad by uh, sports car standards. It's it's reasonably comfortable. So this is the the 1.5 liter, which is the smallest engine they do. It's got 130 horsepower, so it, it's certainly no slouch on with a one ton. And they do say that uh, the Mazda engineers kind of designed it for this engine. Obviously, it's quite a lot less power than the top end engine, which uh, initially had about 160, and then they upgra uprated it in 2018 to 180. So you've got an extra 50 horsepower to play with with the uh, bigger two liter engine. This 1.5 and, and the two liter, both of them are naturally aspirated. So they sort of just have that instant response that you need from naturally aspirated engines. There's no turbo lag, there's no turbo to speak of. So. It sounds nice, there's a good rasp from the exhaust and the sensation of speed is here because you know this is a, a small car, you're low down and you sort of you, you hunk it in with all the, the car around you and of course you've got a 7,000 rpm to play with so This, uh, this 1.5 litre engine is actually quite economical, so you don't have to go in there too often. It's got a 45 litre fuel tank and you're getting like 45 mpg. Obviously it's a small lightweight car, so it's, um, you know, that, that really helps. It also means that it's really easy to place around town and, you know, if you need to do a three point turn or whatever, you can just um, very quickly just make the manoeuvre. And... Now these, these the little tiny rear wheel drive cars normally have a really good turning circle, so I'm just going to try it out. Oh yeah, that's uh, quality that. This is actually the Sport trim level and it's got these really nice heated leather seats and the Bose stereo system which is actually in this headrest. So it sounds fantastic and, and it's just coming at you from either side of your head so uh, that's really good. I like the infotainment system, you can control it with a scrolly dial, twisty dial down here by your arm so it's, it's easier, you can just kind of have your arm relaxed like this and, and uh, control it quite easily but you can also touch screen it as well if you want the screens like high up up here you can see it without looking too far down or off the, keep your eyes off the road and stuff I always forget with the MX-5 it's a it's a, a car that you get a little wave off other other owners there's a little sort of 
following of them. It's, it's brilliant, I love it. What's it like in terms of space in here? Well, there's enough space for me. I'm, I'm six foot tall, but if, if you're a bit taller, it might just be worth a, a test drive. Uh, bloody hell, look at that. Uh, if anyone's got one of them, that's a <laughs> Mitsubishi 3000 GT. Anyway, what was that about? So if you're, if you're a bit taller, just, just uh, test drive one, because the seat doesn't seem to want to go much, much further back. So um, you might struggle for leg room. Something I like about this particular car and the spec is this color, this, this, this Mazda red color. It's like the color that all their press cars were in. I don't know how Mazda do it, but up close, up when you see it in person, it's just such a glorious metallic red color. I would highly recommend specking your MX-5 if you get one in one in this color. Mazda had a couple of uh, strategies with this car when they uh, were developing it. The first one is that it has to be a 50-50 weight distribution. So if you put the car on, on a seesaw, it will stay flat right in the center. So with the driver in as well, the car is uh, perfectly balanced. That's obviously important for the handling characteristics of this uh, car. And then secondly, they have this thing called the Gram strategy and it's about saving weight everywhere they can. So from the previous model, they've saved weight in the engine, um, the gearbox, the suspension, and the roof. To tell you the, the meticulous level of detail they go to, basically they shaved off a gram or two from the, the handle on the seat that changes the backrest. As you'd expect in the twisty corners, the MX-5 is brilliant. It's, it's just so eminently chuckable round corners and it grips well, it, it, it stays flat. They added a little extra feature to the MX-5 in, in 2022, and that is something called kinematic posture control. Sort of a bit like stability control, but it just, when you're cornering, it just breaks one wheel on the inside of the corner. So if you're cornering right, it'll, co it'll break the, the right rear wheel. And it just helps to keep the car flat around corners. The gearbox is a six speed manual, and it's that typical Mazda sort of, uh, just snickety but very short throw and uh, very quick to use and exactly what you need in a sports car. It's got um, electric power steering whereas the NNC had um, hydraulic. Now to a lot of petrol heads that's a bad thing but I, I have to say I can't really tell any difference between this and, and the, the NC. The steering is not like ultra sharp it's probably given how amazing it is around right on around the twisty bends and stuff the steering is not its, its actual best feature but it's certainly not any worse than the previous uh, cars you can't drive an mx5 with the roof up unless it's raining basically every other weather the roof has to be down that's the that's the rule really and uh, most mx5 owners abide by it so what's it like on the motorway uh, it's quite it's quite noisy as you'd expect especially with the roof down but it's not too bad, you know. I mean, I'm only doing 50, 55 miles an hour now. It's still quite noisy. My hair's getting blown around. But the ride is pretty smooth. Oh. Tell you what, I've not actually seen a single other one of these MX-5s while I've been driving around. I've seen some of the older ones, but not, not an ND anywhere. They, they actually haven't sold that many. So I really like that Mazda have carried on building it, despite the fact that they know that they're not actually going to sell a huge amount. I'll just show you around the cabin because there's, there's actually not much. It's obviously quite sparse in here, Spartan. But um, you do have a very small cubby hole in the middle. Two cup holders behind you which fit this fat bottom bottle. All right. This is your glove box behind you here. Not There's nothing where the glove box would normally be. No, nothing in the way of door pockets or anything. So. Not much storage in the cabin, but you know, it's, it's not that sort of car, is it? Otherwise, the interior is really nice. The dials in front of me, two traditional sort of style ones, your big rev gauge in the middle, which is the only important one, the speedometer on the right, and then you've got your um, sort of digital part. So they've not gone full digital dash, they've just got the, the left hand side, which gives you um, various bits of information like temperature and, and fuel and stuff. In terms of the adjustability of the steering wheel, from 2016 up until 2019, you couldn't pull the steering wheel out towards you. You could only adjust it up and down. Now in this car, a later one, you can, uh, it's got telescopic forward and back control as well. Now the reason that the first one didn't have that was because the Mazda thought, well, you don't need it and it's, it'll save some weight. So they didn't bother putting it in. But then the customers were complaining saying, 
well, why can't I move the steering wheel out? So Mazda were like, oh, okay, then we'll put it in. And in the end, uh, they designed one that didn't actually take up any extra weight at all. So can I actually think of any, any downsides to this car? And not really, because anything I can think of are just based on the fact that it's a small car and small roadster. I mean, the boot's a bit small. It's actually apparently smaller than the, the NC, the previous generation. So yeah, you can only fit kind of like a, a couple of small bags in there. I didn't really get to grips too well with the sat nav on here, but the thing is it's got Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, so just use that. The ride is very slightly harsher than, than the NC that I drove, but that's paid off for in, in uh, improved handling and so on. This 1.5 litre engine's not the fastest, it doesn't make it the fastest car in the world, it's not 60 and 8 seconds. That's okay because that, this car's about having fun in the corners and, and enjoying yourself like that. It's not about outright acceleration. Uh, if you wanted that, then just buy a Tesla and, you know, you can go fast in a straight line. I think the other thing that will stand this car in good stead in the future is the fact that it's it's very simple. You know, the engine doesn't have any turbo or, or intercooler or all the extra things that turbos bring. The roof is just manual, so you just flop it down with your arm and it's not gonna, it can't really go wrong. So it just means that, that uh, this is gonna really last well, and it should be, as long as the Mazda have sorted out their rust issues, a really good usable classic that'll last a long time. When I say a classic, it's going to be a long time until it's a classic, but uh, I'm sure one day it will be. And it's right at that, it's one of the very last uh, naturally aspirated sports cars, really. It's a big thanks to Tony Blount for lending me the car, legend. Um, he's actually got a bit of a collection, so I might be able to do a few more from him. If you want to see the review of the previous generation, because they're a lot more affordable, so if you're in the market for uh, an MX-5, then the NC is definitely a one to think about. And that car I've done a review of, so if that's going to be there, just click that and, uh, and watch it, because that's a great car as well. Yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next video.